that was the only time i i got to do like cinema cinema you know to like, make it structureless you probably have to structure yeah. it even more being on set is like a blank to me i had to mention exactly just to prove that i've done some research the only way i can watch something is only if i can sit through it i hope amrit keeps uh, a bunch of this like I, i'm not going to do a complete uh start from the beginning we can just chat and then i'll i'll jump into it but no you t- tell me a little bit about your uh, I- intro to international cinema i think that's the uh, i think a lot of places wherever i've read from you uh, uh wherever online it's written it's that you have uh, you got into international cinema at the age of 19 right uh, yeah yeah and uh, you 18 19 year around that time yeah so who who was the person who pushed you into like who as in like but, who is the per- did someone push you into international cinema or did you discover it by yourself no 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 there I mean, there was a catalyst of course uh, okay. my roommate basically sure uh, yeah in college and he taught me this thing that we cannot talk about and from there you could just access <laughs> uh, you know all yeah. the films and uh, oh, okay and okay as it like okay what we can't talk about or okay fair enough right. yes yes yeah. um and uh, you know and i was basically i got into engineering college and first day of the engineering college i think i was yeah 18 and mm. i knew first day before even entering this is not the place for me i don't know how i remember this image of me yeah. standing in front of the college <laughs> and crying <laughs> so, i have gone through similar similar yes experience yeah, yeah, yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so that and then i had moved to the city just i took that college uh, just because i was in love with this girl yeah and uh, i had, you know the mm. logical seem thing seemed to be to chase her <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so it didn't work out but like so mm. i was in this mode of heartbreak and stuff so that guy introduced me to cinema and i just started watching all these romantic comedies basically interesting so my heartbreak american yeah american okay. romantic comedies you know uh, so i and just initially good luck chak or like whatever sure. how to lose a guy in 10 days whatever like all the 27 dresses like all the names you sure, 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 like, sure 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 because yeah. i had nothing to do i would get up in the morning <laughs> get dressed 7 o'clock and i would not be able to get up the courage to go to college so i would just start watching films and all day i would watch films like like three films four films five films a day like yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff i got into. yeah and i am like a very obsessive person so if i like something very much Hmm. I would then find out in the beginning. Obviously, you choose actors. So I remember like the, one of the first person I I loved when some film. I don't remember which which film it was. It was like hmm. this Catherine Heigl who used to do all romantic comedies. Then I started. Hmm. I watched all the romantic comedies that For, were, had Catherine sure. Heigl in it. Sure, Only sure, slowly sure, later sure. I got into you know, but from Pulp Fiction, Black Swan. Then um, I started looking at okay, this is something spectacular. Yeah, Somebody has made it. Was there in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then you start. Then yeah. that became my introduction to directors. Okay. And then once I. got into this kind of films then i started discovering ki like what is in other country or from basically from directors to other directors sure. so you know somebody talk about kurosawa that will take me to like now kurosawa ka films but then now i watch kurosawa ka films that i'm interested in the japanese cinema yeah. like so i would then discover mizoguchi i will discover ozu i will discover uh, mikio naruse or whatever like yeah so then it was from then on what is the chain reaction and my obsessive nature really came to fore because no no it's uh, i had a lot of time but, uh, I think that's just the way cinephilia works. I think in general, it's just that you, and again, you need to be a, somewhat of a maniac and an obsessive in many senses. Yeah. So you, the chain, the chain never ends. Also, right? It's like you yeah. begin one place and it sort of because when you go to Quint, even Tarantino, like I mean, like he for American cinema, he's supposed to be like this huge, uh, postmodern, you know, filmmaker in many ways, but. if you then study about his work you go back to french new wave and whatever so again it's like you yeah. know you keep on yeah uh, the but black spotation films and like, you know the grand house cinema yeah absolutely but i i think uh, before we start it formally i wanted to ask is it hard then after experiencing and watching international cinema to then watch um indian cinema or to then watch well let's just say commercial cinema i think indian cinema itself has different spaces it also has an art indie art house space but it also still has a very demonstrable commercial space nowadays really poor unfortunately for the most part but uh, earlier it has somewhat flourish sometimes and you know so is it so like for example do you look forward more because it sort of happened to me a little bit is that do you look forward more to the film festival than to the weekly release 
you know that uh, that yeah. is so uh, by default a truth because mm-hmm. you know i am in pursuit of excellence in a particular field mm-hmm. right matlab at, at the same time till today i mean i don't have that syndrome that most filmmaker has you know okay, when you even you are watching a film you are thinking about the technicalities of it if i'm really mm-hmm. into it i am into it like i'm still an audience like i still yeah. have like the i still cry i still laugh i still yes. like sit on the edge of my seats whatever the film is trying to do if yeah, i'm yeah. sitting in mm-hmm. doing it so i'm still a uh, very much a viewer although i get very mm-hmm. little time to access like you know my movie count has gone from like 600 700 to year to like 170 200 so that kind of i mean happened. that's a sign of the fact that you are working <laughs> i think about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 600 700 numbers are a sign of uh, college uh, vela panti let's just say that <laughs> <laughs> uh, true yeah I mean, yeah, yeah so i would say it has changed also over a period of time like there was a time that i didn't consume commercial cinema at all mm-hmm. because that didn't uh whatever parameters i had it didn't succeed to engage me in any way yeah, but in recent fair. times it has changed i would say in past couple mm-hmm. of years because I, especially indian commercial cinema mm-hmm. i have started to look at it in a different way that uh, mm-hmm. to me it is a different kind of art form altogether yeah like it's an art form that i can never even attempt like if i had watched for, I, this is how i can put it if mm-hmm. i had only watched bollywood films in my life i would mm-hmm. have watched them i would have been a continued avid watcher of sure. them but i would have that would have never this thought that i can also make something make, or do yes. something in this would never occur to me sure although although now i would say i'm a very commercial filmmaker at heart uh, i get what you mean the, i I know uh, I get what you mean totally and I, I think we'll we'll discuss a little bit about that when when we start discussing the film itself but uh, yeah it's very interesting to me uh, and yeah the, you're totally right i mean not that i want to make this a defense of uh, commercial cinema at all because i know i've drifted apart from commercial cinema itself yeah so the way i look at it now you know this is a different art form in which the way i i i have understood it is like songs are the main thing in it that yes. is what it works on and everything else is just fills in between um yeah. fills in between to just basically which are the moment of some rowdy muchness or whatever yeah, like yeah, yeah. high point emotions basically yeah, yeah. so once i have that once since i have that context i'm able to watch, watch some of the films yes. for example very recently i watched uh, uh a tiger 3 tiger 3 uh, yes i have not and, seen and it and but I, yes. I, i watched it i watched yeah. it i had a good time watching it and yeah. now like I I get made fun of. <laughs> no, but lot. I think I mean but I think I, that's... I, I do hmm. because I, now the only thing that matters to me is can I say true? It could be the most uh, best film everybody is saying, but if if it is doesn't engage me, for example, till now I've never I've I, I've never been able to watch, for example, 2000 and Space Odyssey. Sure. And none of this is like remark on the, like who am I to like remark on the quality of these films one way or yeah. the other? But it the I mean I'm not I'm past that stage where like you know I. The only way I can watch something is only if I can sit through it. No, no, that's totally <laughs> the fair. The intellectual value of it is not sufficient enough for me to. No, and I, it. yeah, I feel that's a totally fair argument. I mean, I, I yeah. again that uh, I totally like again two thousand one. I mean, I love, but I understand that I, it's not a film that I can recommend to every every everyone or anyone actually. Like who is a casual watcher, I can never recommend something like two thousand one. Right. Right. It's the. again the uh, one of the pitfalls of cinephilia is ki you have a canon and then if you don't follow the canon and you don't uh, yeah. wa- like obey it in some ways yeah. you get made fun of but i'm just like i know <laughs> i think it's i think it's best to again the subjective nature of it and i think what you said is actually very true like uh, at the core of the thing you have to be engaged like if you're not being yeah. engaged in something then then there is no i mean of course you can appreciate it but then you can yeah yeah like for yeah. example you know i that was 2001 any time i've tried it like five or six times mm. every time by the first 10 minutes i'm astounded like i'm just yeah. bewildered because i think mm. like pura jo human society ka fundamental violence ka conflict hai usse yes. leke usko pure 10 minute mein dikha diya hai mm. so i'm astounded by it but mm. i am at the same time i know it is all here and it's nothing like After a totally. time, after about twenty thirty minutes, I'm like nothing is happening, and I'm not. I, I feel disconnected. So no, no absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's totally fair. I'm not going to be the one. See, I'm. I'm. I have a lot of 
affection for some really quote unquote dodgy films i think what are in in mainstream cinema and i've been made fun yeah. of that a fair bit <laughs> so i'm not uh, i'm not no, i think this is an important point to highlight because i think it's because the the relationship with films have to be individualistic i think yeah. that's and as something i would say to people who watch our films i would really like or just in general also we you know mm-hmm. whatever even if you watch one film 10 film whatever regardless of mainstream or you know completely art house somewhere in mm-hmm. between the relationship has to be personal it, whatever meaning it has it shouldn't have meaning because it has meaning for somebody else and somebody yeah, else. yeah absolutely uh, for, because of that you can give it another chance you know like mm-hmm. i watched taxi driver the first time and i was like it's okay but i watched it after spending 5 years of loneliness and to me it was <laughs> the most Yeah. most visceral thing ever like you know yeah. it, it just genuinely matlab it fucking like my heart oh, yes. was like you know bursting like it's it's like that kind of experience so sometimes it's it's, it's you're not in the right space or mind to oh, uh, you take that you mm-hmm. know and because of the uh, monument the thing has become you revisit it after a certain point of time you deserve that kind of chance because of that conversation yeah But ultimately, it has to do something to you in order to of for course. you to be uh, something. No, no, you. I totally agree, and I think uh, I'm very much of that school of thought. Only I am not as much as uh, actually film school hasn't taught. I was saying that film school might have taught me otherwise, but no, actually, in cinema, uh, cinema studies has never taught you to undervalue emotional engagement. I think, and I right. I, I value it more than intellectual one. Like to me, it has to go. from here i, I can like i know here, i don't yeah. know the yeah it's the, from heart to head as opposed to yeah. head to heart so th- that, yeah that. even this is my philosophy for film making as well mm-hmm. like i feel like he, uh, i have to be in, uh, or or even in life i would say like you know mm-hmm. emotion have to be the prime most core then i will use my intellect to understand the shape and form and how to navigate that emotional space is mm-hmm. the use of intellect Mm-hmm. baki the primal thing and the core thing of it has to some sort of like emotional connect or disconnect or whatever yeah. right? no i totally agree uh, on that note i think uh, we should start this officially uh, i i hope amrit keeps uh, a bunch of this cuz i think this has been i think it's very uh, telling of the film you've made also and the ethos and the sort of you know uh, the spirit of the film also in many senses but anyways this is my first Thanks so let me start formally. Uh hello everyone and welcome to High on Films. My name is Dhruv Goyal and I'm a novice film critic and podcaster conducting my first official interview for High on Films. So best of luck to me and to you who is listening. Uh if you if I mess up I'm sorry you can please be forgiven. uh but uh, i hope it all goes well of course because uh, if nothing else for our guest who shares the first name with me but luckily nothing else uh <laughs> for him and for and love for cinema and love for cinema yes that that of course is there but uh, yes uh, this is dhruv solanki he he has written and directed five short films which have screened at uh, south asian film festival australia i think is one of the festivals it, they have screened that and then today though this is his first feature film debut we are going to be talking about uh, which is playing on good show uh, right currently and it's titled it's all in your head it's a coming of age indie drama i would like to say a fairly not drama i would like to say a comedy coming of age comedy uh, of six siblings I mean, but actually, rather than introduce it formally, I think the log line of the film itself is great, which is, "What if?" Uh, I mean, you can you can say it. I I think you you've been yeah. ingrained in the making of it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Thank I you think... for this introduction. Um, and the log line of the film is, "I'm really really happy to be on this platform, like High End Films." As I said, um, means a lot to me. Uh, the log line of the film is what if kardashians were born in a rural rajasthani family and lived in badodra on a budget six yeah. siblings six problems one day yeah it's a great hook i think like in in general like just to get and i think it again like i was this is my uh, cinema studies brain going directly into you know what target audience is there for you what specifics you are sort of targeting in terms of you know um your film the people who you th- want the film to want to watch the film like i think the, that's you're targeting a specific specific audience in one sense but you're also operating on a fairly broad emotional base uh with characters who are very specific though which i think is very uh yeah 
uh, very much the uh, hook, like the idea of the film and we'll be discussing everything about the film as as much as we can uh, all about i have lots of questions about the ethos in general the bare bones production cost which is 9129 usd see i had to mention exactly just to prove that i've done some research <laughs> uh, to uh, then also casting i think because how much ever i mean uh, we only have dhruv here but uh, it is very much a collaboration i think which is your uh, which Absolutely. is the spirit of your project i think right so uh, aesthetics which i think i'm fascinated by because i don't see many people make films on a phone in india uh, and just lack of conventional drama which i am always grateful for uh, because there is too much uh, lecturing and too much uh, condescension yeah. towards the audience that you see nowadays when something like this has happened so but yeah before that i think uh, just to mention the collaboration and the sort of stars of the film are the six raj parohit siblings uh who run a thrift store right the dirty fits yes is, the yes, background it's the in the background here if the video is coming out but uh, dirty fits is uh behind um in the background where dhruv is set, sitting uh, they identify themselves as the dirt gang dirt spell d u r t um and two of them jyotsna and bonita are editor and no a photographer and editor Uh, yeah, so Josna is the producer. Josna is the produced it, mm. and Josna is also one of the cinemats of the film, and mm-hmm. obviously the actor. Bolita yeah. was my uh, like creative, you can say, director's assistant or sure. director, but she was the only collaborative. We didn't have all these titles, and she edited the film as well. Yeah, and it's very being... interesting to me that she has another project which almost seems like is at the opposite end of the spectrum in many Endless, senses. Yes. To me. <laughs> I mean, I've not got. Yeah. I've unfortunately not gotten to see it because it didn't release yeah. here. Um, oh. Very looking. I'm a big Devakar yeah. Banerjee fan, so I'm also looking. Me too. To me that. too. I also not yeah. got a chance yesterday. I got yeah. sick. Like I, all of us, we were waiting for go to watch with Bharita because she just came back yesterday. Mm. But I got sick. I had fever yesterday, so I couldn't. Sure. I'm also very excited to watch it. But I'm a huge Devakar yeah. Banerjee fan. So, so, so yeah, I hope it's great. I mean, I've heard good things about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think just to mention that the other sis- sisters and one brother. uh so the other sisters are dipshika bhagyashri manshri all all of them are uh playing let's just say a version of themselves uh, rather yeah. than themselves because i think there's that difference that's going yeah. on and the brother is bhuvnesh who's uh so do so i think your film is very much following these six people over the course of a day right in vadodara yeah. gujarat and how they tackle personal professional problems and some of them overlap some of them don't overlap in terms of the problems they have uh but there is a great amount of uh, freedom or and i and i mean that as a compliment in terms of lack of uh like lack of see this sounds very negative when you say it but i feel it's It, to me it's a positive because uh, you're ingrained in your head to think that structure structure structures everything but like it feels very dispersed you know in a in a, in a yeah. good sense so yeah but uh, i think i always this, take that as a compliment because okay. it is structured like because sure. it is like you know a lot of people tell me that it's a documentary or it's not even so but like like it's short breakdown to that level like it's of course of course like yeah the, to, to make it structureless you probably have to structure yeah. it even more it's the whole yes, yes, yes right yeah but before anything i think uh, first question i would want to ask is uh, about when did you meet the raj prohit sisters and uh, siblings sorry and uh, when did this idea become a concrete thing of uh, making this film with them um yeah so i had this idea of making a film in 20s for a, like since like a, since i was like 22 23 um i would mm. say 20s but more like you know from this age of 17 i started you know feeling all this like falling in love having heartbreak having certain mm. kind of understanding about girls and having a change in that understanding mm-hmm. what kind of conflicts i was going through and i was watching i think around that time you know 17 a lot of french films and a lot of like it is american coming of age films and they mm-hmm. resonated with me but i didn't 
never saw anything around me that resonated sure. with me that talked yeah. about those things that i could reflect yeah. myself in them so that was like a very strange phenomena you know and, uh, so i had this thing that you know i'm going to make a film about uh, whatever this time period of coming of age mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so i had that idea for a four five year period then i finally started developing a script um mm. about which was around based around me and mm-hmm. me me and me my my friend who was hanging out so these two boy hang out it takes period over a year uh, yeah. and uh, four seasons and there would like going to be four episodes of that sure. so i was working on that script mm-hmm. for quite a while i would say like two to three years roughly mm-hmm. and i had like pretty much the story sorted out and i had written the already the first 25 30 pages of script but it has been such a long period of time doing that that i wanted somebody to read it mm-hmm. and one of the characters in that that i had written was manshri the, okay. the mm-hmm. yeah because uh, my friend had brought her home and we used to hang, just hang out and chill mm-hmm. and I remember, you know as, as it was fictionalized version of that scene mm-hmm. so i was like okay great like that's the first mm-hmm. person reached out to she agreed mm-hmm. and during that reading of the script she said i have and i would read it and just shoot it like with a mm-hmm. camera at that time i was working phone came into the picture much much later sure. so i mm-hmm. had a cinemat and uh, we were shooting these rough uh, things and she said yeah i have uh, all the other sisters also mm-hmm. uh, if you want other people to read i was like yeah i'm sure i'm mm-hmm. looking to meet other people because i want to hear their stories mm-hmm. what is going through because this much i was always knew that it would be sort of non actors sure uh, that that much was always there it would be realistic because the whole idea was coming from that place sure yeah uh, so i was very interested in different different kind of stories of other people because i had a very uh, i would say limited life in that sense it was all my time went into watching films and reading books so yes. <laughs> I, you know i didn't, i didn't have like so much exposure to mm-hmm. uh, all the other stuff mm-hmm. so uh, when that that happened in manshi i met in september 2020 okay. and then i met bonita i think in november or december 2020 and bonita and me jelled very very much like mm-hmm. bonita and me got together like very much because she had a passion for films and i mm-hmm. had a defect so yeah. she was like in the very first meeting she said you know you should make a film about us sisters because mm-hmm. that has been a dream of her and jochna for a long period of time since their childhood yeah. but you know these people come from like a village so like film seems like some of extremely far fetched thing yeah fair enough uh, yeah. but uh, mm. so but i was like but i was very reluctant very okay. reluctant i just said no obviously in the beginning because you know yeah. these are five girls and they came from this background of social media and fashion mm-hmm. and i had a very condescending uh, attitude to as we all do i think which as I we all do yeah, right yeah. Uh, <laughs> but as you slowly you know mm. start meeting and talking you realize like, literally we are the same like and it's more yeah. interesting to reflect yourself in other people than to reflect yeah. in yourself because uh, with yourself you get bored after a while it's all the same shit but like with other people you exploring all these new aspects as well and yeah. for me it was like such a thing because i'm getting into a culture lingo attitude absolutely yeah way of living which is completely mm-hmm. dissociated to mind but at the same time at core it's the same we come from villages we have no backing of any sort mm-hmm. uh not even in the sense like in my case and there is not even from families like mm-hmm. you know just so very very detached um mm-hmm. but we have all these like dreamy things <laughs> in our head that we go to like you know yeah uh, do all these crazy crazy stuff so yep. there was a lot of resonance also so over a 2 3 months period i got convinced i think by gen fab 21 uh, i knew that i'm going to do something with them exact shape sure. and whatever of it came much much later but that we started and from there on we worked every day almost sure we sure. all had jobs and stuff but like we yeah. would take out some time every day and we would work i would give them scenes and exercise there were like over 50 exercises over a year before sure. we started doing anything so they had already started dirty fits as a dirty fits was there from before yes sure dirty okay. fits had was uh, i think they had already started like a 6 or 8 months ago prior to meeting that was actually the first point that really made me interesting i thought i could make a documentary about young kids mm. uh making a thrift store uh mm-hmm. in a tier 2 city like that was a very interesting thing to me what you mentioned the idea of developing it over the year i mean it sort of links a little links a little bit with uh, one of the filmmakers you're paying homage to uh, or sort of are inspired by in many senses is the sort of dialogue over plot quote and quote which is the thing you uh, it's pu- publicized at also in the press notes is uh, is that very much coming from the linklater school and sort of you know um Richard Linklater is an indie filmmaker for people who are not fam- familiar he has a new film coming actually this next month on Netflix if i'm not wrong uh, hitman i think him and sean baker were the, i mean sean baker i totally understand and we're going to discuss why uh, why he's coming up but no i'm i'm more interested in the sort of dialogue over plot thing like you 
so did, did did this come as a sort of result of it developing over a year or as opposed to you know you being um you having already written the material and then sort of supplying it to them so did you think that uh, it was easy it was a more natural way to sort of tell their story to have a dialogue over pl pl plot approach uh so this dialogue over plot approach is is not i would not say it's something my uh, thing inherent like if i do a next mm -hmm. project matlab i'm as i say I'm more of a i wanted to always wanted to be a genre filmmaker so okay yeah, so yeah so this is horror yeah horror and thrillers is basically sure. what i really want to do uh, mm -hmm. but th because this was coming from a place of reality you know so lot of decisions were out of my hand my thing was to sort of be true to that so that was by north and so in a sense that all these influences i was only able to look at when i once i had made the films film okay okay only by looking back i knew you know that days and confuse is so imbibed in me that it has been, that's where the one day thing came it from it translated into yeah yes. yeah, yeah. Okay, it, okay, and okay. a lot of things are there you know but all of that i was able to look back and see because in in the middle of thick of the things it was just i had this mm. constant reality happening in front of me because we were engaging every day and mm. whatever was interesting was sort of going into the book going into the book going into the book going into the book like that mm -hmm. from all that material came ki actually like okay on another thing what happened is uh, around uh, working for 8 9 months mm -hmm. with them with a different exercises i shot the short film called 10 minute break okay um which is uh, uh, and i never got finished or whatever because mm -hmm. it's just terrible but that was like i wrote a a, a conventional script at mm -hmm. that point it was a short film only mm. but that didn't work at all okay as in as so a script also, it didn't work or did it not turn so, out uh, it, it, as a director but i but whatever the approach was it was conventional film making sure. and it was not landing sure. so whatever was gaping holes in that and why it didn't work i analyzed all that and lot of things came from that mm -hmm. also then this thing of a uh, dialogue over a plot also something i like that that came from that because that had mm. a very fixed kind of plot kind of thing mm. and that was not landing well so i realized okay uh, these are the six layers and now which mm. layer over which layer has to be highlighted and mm. how do i arrive at that thing so sure. characters became the first thing sure. like, you know that was my biggest biggest thing um, like uh, if anything else could go wrong but if i have these six character each character emerge separately 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 i would have thought that i have succeeded in the making the film and mm. then the second layer would be now how do i make these characters characters can only be done by actions or by mm. dialogue yeah now i never want again the, it was realistic so realistic i went to mundane again mm. because i think i'm very even in horror and thriller even if i go to that this is something i'm understanding about myself that i'm very mm. interested in people's private lives I'm sure. like a pervert in that sense, like boys. Um, well, I it's the whole, uh, but I it's the whole thing, right? That cinema make watchers especially are perverts only. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I'm very, very specifically, I think, interested in just like domestic lives. Sure. Like a, uh, even if I write like a period piece, I wrote this script set in nine point forty eight century about mm -hmm. like uh, uh, called Rebel Shagumri. That that even in that, like that is a. proper like an action sword fighter mm -hmm. because there are two main characters are these transgender war secret warriors mm -hmm. and there's like a whole plot of like you know rebellion and all that stuff but like ultimately i score of the film only again after writing it i realized mm -hmm. that uh, um that it is again about their private lives only yeah so that's but the I core think, of it uh, the thing is the decoration yeah. nee but i think private lives are interesting like of course they, they can be viewed in a voyeuristic sense I, but i don't think your camera here at least is voyeuristic much at all yeah. actually i don't think it's i think it's much more sort of peeking into their lives as opposed to um, yeah. you know uh forcing the like uh, there are films which do that very well yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Like, you know that, that's a and style that, of film that was i was very uh, very mm. scared of that like you know okay. and being women also being they makes a lot of difference because sure. there are certain aspects of life and uh, th these are the questions that i had to ask myself and wrestle mm. myself with but that that is the matlab theme i write that kid the thing has is not like you know not that i don't want to or want to be voyeuristic but mm. what is it that why am i interested in private lives like what is it mm. that so my thing was that you know it's like a window like you mm. get to peek through this window and see around what is happening like that's the sure. level or whatever like uh, of gaze ha huh, the um, metaphorical level in, on which you are sort of viewing right. them is the window yeah. as opposed to yeah, i mean because you know is, that yeah. all dictates where you going to put the camera at how of much course. distance or whatever like all these yeah. visual aspects also and in terms of characterization also you know 
Yeah. Um, and also like this thing I always had like you know most of the youth films that are made they are just made with so much intense like rage and like you know it's just the dramatic points are just so ceiling high and I was like you know this is am, not I've anything been, close to. I've been no I've not been banned but I've been told not to talk about films which I don't like. Uh, so I will uh, refrain. But there have been recent films only that have come out which I'm just like. And I think that's where the thing that stands out about uh, it's all going in your head is the idea, at least to me, that it is made by 20-year-olds, about 20-year-olds. And I think this is another thing you guys mentioned, but there is that lack of condescension, which I think is a big, big thing. <laughs> like, you know, it's very easy to... Uh, and I, you only said, right, I think, and I would also like, you know, I'm not the person who would watch a film like this automatically and be like, you know, I, I'm i into the lives of these people. Like, I, I, inherently as a viewer, I'm very separated from that sort of reality also. Uh, but again, you experience new things you did by meeting them we do through seeing the film right so i mean it's yeah exactly yeah. that's sort of yeah. the whole thing you know this mm. message movie doesn't have any message for a sort but like that's the whole sort of idea you know when we look from outside at any group and that mm. could be related to anything so we have all these notions about this thing as i mm. did as well mm -hmm. but when you and and you we create through that a lot of fault lines Mm -hmm. which are, are completely unnecessary and just coming from just our own prejudice that's our own things yeah. because ultimately things can change but human beings at the core are human beings absolutely <laughs> like i won't uh you know uh, excavate everything but I, I i'm very fascinated by something like the opening of the film right because i thought the film opened in a way where i was like is the film going to be shot entirely in this aspect ratio and if it is I think it's going to be both sort of uh, exhilarating, but also kind of hard to get along with because I think the first six, seven minutes of the film are so chaotic and so uh, cla claustrophobic. And again, that's a compliment because I think to do both those things in one frame is very hard. But I think the film begins in that way where you where you do make use entirely of the phone and the reel and whatever you you get as a it almost feels like an instagram reel right i mean it's it, it does, it's got filters it's got got animated glitters and everything going around so i'm interested in how much did you not want to do that after that though because you don't uh the only time you use the reel yeah uh is yeah. the aspect ratio of the reel also and the sort of you know uh the things that happen within it you only use that one so i was interested to know was there a conscious decision on your part to actually not uh you know focus on that phone, yeah so the, uh, the portrait mm. sort of thing yeah yeah so that that uh, that is used twice in the film so mm. that oh, came yes. from this thing I of know, yeah. in the when mm. bonita gives the audition so yes. i had this mm. very clear thing that came from structure mm. uh, that there's a real life and there's a real life like mm -hmm. in the beginning is the sense that i have of them and which is how world views them right because yeah uh, another thing I, I have just started to say in the screens because we do the physical screen is that uh, uh, on Instagram or social media, we put these bits of ourselves, which are the best bits or the worst bits. Either we are mm -hmm. going through a hard time, we start to put all this stuff, or yeah. either we are going to a vacation somewhere and having a family fun and we start. And we cut out intentionally all these bits from our life, which is yeah. literally what my film is. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. To give that context, you have to have this thing, okay, this is how they project themselves. Sure. Hmm. You know, that is the projection and that is how they want to be seen in public yeah. places yeah. or in the public view. And then, hmm. so that in that it makes sense to have that, you know. No, no, it's a great opening. That, uh, that I mean, world. yeah, I, I, it's great opening in the sense that I, um, it again, it almost puts us as the viewer in a position of, well, are you going to judge them in uh, automatically, yeah. right? I think, which is, I think, interesting and and i i was like you know i found them extremely um you know again infectious energy was there between them which sort of overpowered my otherwise uh well let's just say condescension towards uh people who do project very loud versions of themselves online right so uh so i think it was interesting 
just on that basis and you're right the other time you do it is through when bonita is bonita is giving the inter, uh, giving yeah. her show reel almost to of shooting yeah yeah to the audition so whenever to... you know they're projecting themselves out in this virtual world mm. is where it is used and for the rest of the life which is the normal daily yeah. life we see the aspect ratio which we are sort of more comfortable. yeah absolutely and I, i think that that was the biggest contrast which i actually saw and but but i think what i want to commend you for is that it still doesn't feel like even though there is that contrast between real and real it doesn't feel like the real part is getting critiqued in a very harsh light which yeah. i think is again very rare because i think you get social me- films on social media which literally just want to you know take a dagger yeah. to them and just i mean social media yeah. has lots of its pit- pitfalls also but like there are yeah. good things also about it right so it's the good things and i feel like at the end of the day i think it's it's you can have this objective or subjective point of views which are your beliefs but they are mm. ultimately your own beliefs like there's a whole of world course. out there and whoever that person is that person is ultimately a human being like that yep. that is what i learned through by spending time with these people i think that mm-hmm. and that was the opening scene was the last scene that i figured out okay in the entire mm. because i i i needed this scene where i can introduce these six people mm. and i was just dabbling with a lot of ideas for months and i couldn't figure out something mm-hmm. whatever and then something i figured out okay mm-hmm. this is the way to go about it but i think that also helped me a lot because i was coming from inside out so i already had insane amount of empathy and mm. connectedness with these people so it was just okay, okay like even i matlab like, i relate to these things and although i have don't have the life you know but i am a person you know now i'm giving an in- interview or whatever mm-hmm. speaking for public platform i'm trying to behave a certain way of course yes, versus yes. you know i mean in my real life so i come from <laughs> yeah. those angles instead of trying trying to have something to say so that's why i always like try and make a point even if i have something to say i will try and hide it hide it so there are a lot of like political things or whatever that i put in the film but like they are i try and always not no let but that be. Uh, but i think that's again commend commendable more than anything else because again the whole idea of filmmaking nowadays sometimes is so laborious with the whole message overtaking the drama that you right. don't really get an idea of people yeah. Uh, and yeah I, i was about to ask that unashamed you know very let's just say all of them are confident in some ways that their degrees to confidence are different but different but i think there is just a general sense of you know uh we are you know not let's just not say spe- they don't think they're special but i think it's they some of they, there's an element that they do they are fond of themselves which is uh i think highlighted in your film a fair bit also and i think how much was it so did you just let them how much rain did you allow them to just take over the film like at in certain points because there's a fair amount of improv also right there is but like improv i would say is limited Uh, okay. but because yeah because uh, because if you allow there's six people with different <laughs> energy you're not going to have a film at the end of it yes yes yeah so in that sense matlab it it is fictional and it is structured but the structured and fiction is to in it because we are seeing one, uh, one aspect of them and mm-hmm. you know 15 20 minutes of each character and i i am i am uh, coming from like three years of understanding them and whatever mm-hmm. so i have to translate all that So Absolutely. Hmm. Whatever I'm doing in terms of fiction and structuring and all this is to uh, let them be free within that space. So so that's how I would say like that aspect of it, and you know like how is it is it easier to direct the people who are already very energetic and already performers in front of camera or is it easier to direct the people who are um not that camera friendly or like you know uh, receptive to it like i think dipshika comes very late on in the film uh, yeah. on screen at least and you know there's a there is a marked difference between her and someone like vanita and um, manshri so i think yeah. wh- which is the easier the party to juggle in terms of direction at least uh, well obviously the somber ones are easier to juggle because you know yeah. uh, there yeah this high energy thing is the to get the right sense whether it is landing or not landing is is bit, bit more difficult i would say sure because especially you know when i am trying to like have a consistent mundane laid back tone 
and in that all of a sudden you know this char- <laughs> these characters <laughs> pop up with like a certain kind of mic go a certain kind of energy so yeah. that is i would say is definitely the so you told them to tone thing. down a little, little bit sometimes <laughs> not told I, mean, i would not tell them to tone but tone down i mean uh, actually being on set is like a blank to me i don't know i okay. work a lot from subconscious <laughs> so i don't remember but i yeah. remember being like like terrified of this like just like oh my god like what if this not doesn't work on like it this is like a director's nightmare essentially right like the yeah. whole uh, things not in or not in my control are getting uh, yeah out of control any, any yeah like before... but then those were the pieces which were you know like already you have decided like that okay, okay this mm-hmm. character is going to be on this energy spectrum sure and because that is the emotional truth of that like uh, yeah. like i can't if i give that bonita arc to josna it will not work like mm-hmm. they will not no, be able to connect uh, but to like give credit again i think very much is the They, it doesn't feel like you've ascribed one energy level for everyone like they right. are fairly fluctuate like again i'm because we were talking about bonita and i uh, there's the scene with her and uh, bhuvnesh which is a which is played at a much more uh, yeah lower register let's oh, just say to yeah. only at least in terms of the emotional element of it so i think there is variation within of course each of the characters yeah. as opposed to all of them yeah. existing yeah. as caricatures it was shot on iphone pro max in 4k which is again yeah. one of the things i'm the only thing the idea is for me to show that i've i'm somewhat knowledgeable as to <laughs> but okay. uh, no what were some of the difficulties of shooting this way or easy or ease actually insane so, amount of ease dude like that is okay. i'm like even if you give, give me like a whatever like biggest camera like there are some things i would still out go out of like everybody told me in the beginning not to so like because i i didn't have this mm. phone i had to invest like 2 lakh rupees to buy mm. this phone which was a yeah. huge amount of investment for me and everybody is telling me you just put little bit more money you're going to get a camera mm. but i had been working with camera all my life and i knew there are certain limitations of it and i was not happy with what i was getting from mm. that you, you know either you need it like whatever high end camera which i could never afford and this process was also going to be a long process i realized this is not going to be like you know rent a camera for 10 days go out there and shoot it like not going to happen mm. like i needed to buy whatever equipment i needed that in that sense there was a lot of skepticism in the beginning but once i started working with it there was just mm. like absolute ease like because you know i can shoot things any number of time i can go and shoot the for example like uh, masi ka scene where they do go and drink tea like i could never get that scene on a camera like this just sure. so you just possible. so you just shot a lot and then the editing was the no so the, the it... way, way it happened is that is the process actually what happened in my second film which is mm-hmm. blah 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 uh, mm-hmm. which is a sequel to this which i started okay. earlier okay interesting yeah, yeah which was done three years mm-hmm. this happened very fast so this was scripted and mm-hmm. so short design i could do basically so i could take these people uh, whichever is the location i could go there actually shoot the scene mm-hmm. in pre production and short design it Mm. and come back and edit it and see what it was and then sure. go back and shoot it you know so i have a texture of image and blocking and uh, movement and light and all that shit now is very 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 became convenient to me and if i needed sure. to make changes i could do that so when i reshot it finally it was just literally like a walk like run of that, like 9 days in june and one day in july but mm. it was like a very smooth like i think the most take would have done for anything would be like 3 or 4 like audio was the challenge i would say because a lot of scenes we had to steal so like mm. that skate park scene where all the friends mm-hmm. are sitting uh, we had to steal that scene because there are like five guards around and you can't shoot there so only because we have phone we are able to shoot that sure. but now how do you put the sound equipment because as soon as you bring out the sound equipment that actually becomes the thing the, okay, so sound equipment it. that uh, uh, camera uh, phone allows you to go into these places where you can but the sound still is an issue in those places sure. so sure. i'm yeah, learning and yeah. figuring out how to do that there is a lack of showiness and i, and I uh, in the camera listen like it's i it's an iphone and that becomes automatically when you say you're shooting on an mm-hmm. iphone it becomes a big central part of your narrative but i feel here there is less of it in my in, in at least the sense i noticed that you know it wasn't intrusive and i even and i even refer to something like sean baker's Tangerine, which is shot on an iPhone, right? That was the first film, yeah, maybe yes. shot on an iPhone. Uh, he, yeah, that is the first thing he did on iPhone. Yeah, yeah, and even in that, like that has like you can sense that there's that iPhone cup propulsiveness and kineticism yeah. and whatever. But here, yeah. I felt like the, like a lot of the shots you have actually feel very much like you. They are not shaky at all. They have a very 
serene almost they're like static shots like proper nice wide shots of places and i was like it doesn't feel like it's shot from an iphone which i think is again very uh much in service of the film because i think it isn't calling attention to itself it was that a yeah very, that uh, is like what you described it was the thought process behind it sure. you know anything i am i am of that about anything like you know be either i am reading from this agenda but like whatever and that the filmmaker can have like filmmaker shouldn't be present in the film in that sense and saying okay here i am and if mm-hmm. i have trusted these characters to tell something and these are the characters because i feel i feel like fundamentally where it all begins and what is the most important thing is what you choose to look at mm-hmm. because there are million things around me if yeah. i have chosen this that this is what i'm going to look at by that very fact that mm-hmm. thing now has become important Mm-hmm. and now i have to trust that to deliver whatever it is and through their story and their character i have to do everything everything else that is behind it goes into the service of it and you but scale to do it and not do it is dictated by that only sure no absolutely uh, there were a couple of things which i was like are these intentionally done on your part or uh are these necessitated by some uh things that are present in the frame or anything else so i i think i have two moments which i i sort of picked out one of them was where the audio goes from like the dialogue transforms into almost like voice over uh, and it happens twice i think with dipshika yeah. and once with jyotsna at the place she's taking the photos yeah, yeah. uh and there is another time i was just like there's uh people are talking and then in the middle of it you have almost like a what you call the ozu pillow show or whatever you are going to call it you know it's the yes. where the camera <laughs> just cuts to like a like sun be sunlight falling on leaves i think i i if i'm remembering correctly but but uh, i'm curious those are those what was sort of the thought process before b- behind some of those decisions were there stylistic choices yeah. just born out of uh, <laughs> yeah one so one of the things in those those is purely stylistic the which mm. is the uh, deepshika scene mm-hmm. because um you know uh, it, it just was my dramatic i would that was the only time i i got <laughs> to do like sadwa sadwa you know or yeah. by whatever so really i i have restrained but that was the place that i felt like you know i could do like my whatever showy showy stuff yeah. because <laughs> Yeah, anywhere else like in that sense i i feel like this is very less of my film in that sense you know mm. because all i had to do was sort of just not let myself be intruded <laughs> sure, but that yeah. was the place where i could do something and i i went it was i said because she was going to be here and then she's going to transform from this place to the other place in a seamless transition so how do i come about that sure sure, sure um, got it and now again i realize this uh, the first thought that comes to me is okay we're going to do voice over in these kinds of cuts and stuff and this comes obviously from Darren Smell like you know i'm a huge fan of like night of cups and everything you are uh, you are talking to a uh, uh, disciple only of him also yeah. so he to yeah. me is one of the paramounts you know all the my yeah. never look like any any of his things but like uh, that is naturally only later i realize again that is where it came from that was my first instinct to do that sure he, sure sure, sure. Um, and the 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 photography scene at the again th- that is also coming from the same place but same. that came mm. on editing table that was not an idea from before this dipshika singh idea i had before shooting i knew this is how we're going to cut sure. it this is how it's going to go on mm-hmm. but that ca- came the the somya scene the photography scene of josna that came on the editing table when i uh, had all these ideas uh, when i i wrote the script i checked all those ideas when i shot it i checked the script and when i had shot everything uh, i had yeah, this on the editing table i threw the script out and like whatever material we have we going to make a film out of that we're not mm-hmm. going to edit the script we're going to make the film from whatever we have so sure. at every stage of whatever the previous thing i leave it behind and starts from zero yeah. no i think yeah, other, from opposite end of that opposite yeah. end of yeah, absolutely no, but i think again the other reference points for you were also i think hong sang su was another one oh was, yeah huge 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 yeah. influence uh yeah actually and and now that the more you think uh, at least i'm thinking about it that comparison also sticks a lot from whatever little hong sang see he makes every one film two films every uh, year so it's a bit hard to keep yeah. track of how yeah i know i know made. but uh but uh, he is the most original original film i think that word is 
used very lightly yeah. around but that is one person like i would say that about the filmmakers alive and he would be one of them like yeah he's yeah. the most unique most inventive filmmaker although on the surface it seems like he's doing the most obvious stuff no, but yeah, like, it's the, the whole most... simplicity being hard to uh, yeah, the yeah. hardest yeah. thing right never sort of never, thing. never undermine that <laughs> yeah, undermine. absolutely so before we end on every discussion i wanted to also talk about absences uh so some of the absences that are there in the film i think uh the total lack of parents i think was a very interesting you know um choice in general and i think uh they are there's no almost governing force over like I, there yes, are yes. in professional spaces there are uh with uh, bhagyashree i think is the yeah. most yeah. Boss, uh, yeah. m- most pronounced but um but any particular reason to not engage with those figures uh uh authority figures almost in many senses in personal yeah i think half yeah. of it was conscious and half of it was subconscious like only mm-hmm. now i realize that is complete absence mm-hmm. of these things and i think that comes from just actually our lives like sure. i think that is the kind of parent child relationship i have experienced in devachi mm-hmm. because i think the only time the parent is mentioned is when bhuvnesh is talking about his right right uh right. dance dance uh, school thing dance yeah, right. school yes so yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah no but i i think again one of those things which in indian films they are such a big part in general yeah uh, yeah the other yeah. part i was going to say yeah so i remember mm. so the other part i was going to say is like i never wanted to make most of the films that these make about there are about when you bring those authority figures there is an external conflict at play sure and my intention that was in that part i was very clear that the whatever the fight is whatever the conflict is is what is the next step okay you have chosen these lives now So mm-hmm. I don't want to indulge in that conflict. Ki, okay, this is the old way of life. This is the new of life, and they are colliding like that. Is sure. I think the thing of the past. What is the new thing is now you have chosen this path. This path is not all rosy, hunky dory life. You know, of course, there are yeah. internal, personal conflicts that you are going to go through every day. Yeah, and those are the things. Those those are the next things to be talked about because you know this is a genre that has been done to that. No, and I think it was interesting. Uh, there are moments again with. uh manshri no manshri and aditya where they are talking about um social media and it's the i think that's the closest you at least come to talking about it in the overtest way uh yeah. which i didn't mind actually because i thought uh it was interesting because she says one thing which is critiquing it but then he pushes back on it also which i think is a good yeah. push and pull right you get between yeah uh, people yeah so push and pull as well because that was also happening in context of that the agenda of that scene is that these two people how do people interact and exactly. fall in love or whatever yes. get attracted to each other Absolutely. so that is the first layer uh, of that yes. what is happening so this is just like a conversation in lieu of absolutely. that conversation no no absolutely so, which is i think the whole the whole film operates on that level only like yeah. the messaging comes from the character conversations i this is again your or oh, i don't know if this is meant to be a commentary even but like the whole uh jotsna talking about the location and the location not being pretty enough now as opposed to how it was before yeah Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a commentary. I don't, and the other thing is, I don't care if it's a commentary. It's a commentary. Uh, if yeah. yeah, but but there Probably. is there is that layer also there if you want to dig, want to engage with it exactly. Yes. So that yeah. is yeah. So that is I think all the places. This is how I feel like you know things should be. That sure. is regardless of whether I make this or I make something else. Like the story or narrative or the human experience has to be at the forefront of it. And so, then, if you're interested, want to dig into, there always will be stuff. I will try and put in whatever you can intellectualize it to that. Like there will be all that yeah. kind of stuff and always. But the if somebody want to not engage with that stuff, there should be still something Absolutely. that you can engage with and get insight, whatever. Like you know, on a very um, yeah yeah upfront level. Like and that yeah. always have to be the human aspect of. It. Was there ever a part of you, or is there a part of you that's? scared about making films which are so quote unquote conflict free uh not at all okay not at all um matlab when i when i was i made it in the beginning i was very nervous because i hmm. didn't know matlab you know at the time i had finished this i had no context of what this looks like what is the reference points because it was just like you know i'm making hmm. something and I, i have these real people and whatever um and uh, does this work as a film does is this even a film like all those question i had but now i think i i, I don't i i in fact quite enjoyed i would say like this is something is very exciting hmm. 
uh, and to that's, me. Like, that's, do you think that's also because you have the freedom of something like a streaming space to sort of, you know, uh, play it on as opposed to... I mean, we don't really, like okay. streaming platforms have said, <laughs> said no Actually, to... Actually, yeah, like, they, they are going in... Look at they, us. They, they are, are going more in... More studios a, than anything, mm. you know, either they're doing in-house or they want stars, like, you know, so... All this like digital boom is a bust, like so. There now is no it has outside, become you know? a bust, unfortunately, absolutely. Um, yeah, so nobody mm. like there is literally everybody telling me like not to make these things, like you know, like if I go to Mumbai, if I lived in Mumbai, mm. I would never even make this film because every single person tells me, you know, this is no, this is no. Like like I think in the beginning you said, what is the target audience? Like at the mm. when I was making it, I didn't have a target audience. Target. Mm. Only now I know it. At mm. that time, it was just like okay, I'm going through this. I'm sure a lot of people going through it. There's nothing mm. identified. Let's. Let's talk about this. Like it's mm-hmm. just literally come from that simple space. Sure. Not and you, coming from a very calculated place. Sure. And and you look forward to people's opinions on it. I mean, that's again, I think some there's a divide between uh, some filmmakers don't prefer to uh, engage and some filmmakers do. No, no, no. I to think like everything is welcomed here. Yeah. Like it's a conversation. Okay. Film at the end of the day is conversation when I was sitting alone crying in a room. Mm-hmm. Like, you know... I, the, the I wrote, I had to write, a, he's applying to this grants and stuff and one of the mm-hmm. grants I was applying to is like why cinema or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I wrote that, you know, I watched uh, Night of Cups mm-hmm. sitting in a room alone and being conflicted and a 75-year-old white guy living in Texas makes a film and a yeah. brown kid, 25, 20 kids sitting in an engineering college watches it, cries and feels like, okay, I understand what is happening to me. Like my mm-hmm. life makes sense to me like. You know, uh, I have found enough people for that Night of Cups episode that I'm actually going to try and do a podcast on some time. Uh, <laughs> considering very, there's a very select few bunch of people who love it and then there's people who hate it. But yeah. uh, anyways, I think, I don't know if this is the correct note to end on, but I think, uh, actually, no, I don't want to end on this note. I want to end on what future projects have you li- uh, are lined up for you in terms of what you're making at least yeah so we have like three more things lined up um mm. i'm editing my second film um blah 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 which mm-hmm. uh i have directed bonita has also directed parts of it sure. uh, there was three schedules she has directed mm. one and uh, so we are editing her currently hopefully uh, we're trying to get it ready in for festivals in two to three months time um, another project which I have written and acted in is uh, directed by Abdul Aziz. It's, okay. He's made a love trilogy mm-hmm. uh, feature film. Uh, and it is the third film in that uh, film. It's a film about a young couple, arranged marriage. They go to Goa and one day of their honeymoon. Okay. So, yeah. So that is already again done. Uh, mm-hmm. It's in, in post-production. And the third film is the short film that me and Joe have produced called If You Know You Know. It was had uh, Kashishka Grant. It's going to have a a premiere at Kashish. It's a short film. Sure. The third one is a short film. Sure. And that is Bonita's debut short film. And it will be playing at Kashish Fest Festival next week. Oh, next month, sorry, in May. Sure. So those are the okay. next three projects. Sure. I'm looking have. forward to watching all of them. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to following this track because I, I think I've tired off a little bit from the American indie track a little bit off late. Right. Just because I think there's only enough... Sundance scene as I can enjoy in my life. Enjoy, I know, I know <laughs> so, what you mean, dude. And and I, this has been so refreshing to watch Indian cinema because of my film. I've been going to festivals and stuff, and to watch Indian Indian cinema. And oh my God, the work people are doing in India in Indian film industry is yeah. insane. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's so I think I, I think I'm very curious to see how this you know uh, progresses in in that right now small space. Hopefully, gets slightly bigger. Like I don't. Of course, it will never. I feel in a country like India, which is all about uh, a certain, and I don't, again, not a criticism for whoever is listening. There is a certain loudness to emotion, to aesthetic, to everything. Yeah. This type of film. I think I it's just a lo- fundamental ingrained. This is not a criticism. Like, I mean, only no, no, if you're not. by it. it exactly. Is, it's, it's a, it's a mm-hmm. great Absolutely. Or you. And I feel uh, what you are doing is anyways mixing both in a way, which I think is a good balance like i feel again as you said your film isn't something which i cannot recommend to anyone you know like yeah. i can recommend it to my parents <laughs> uh, parents yeah i'm trying to think how how receptive they will be to you know less plot uh but yeah because they scolded me once when i recommended them a <laughs> film with uh, minimal plot but uh, anyways i think uh on that note we can end this thank you so much for this interview slash 
analysis, I suppose, in some ways <laughs> of uh, it's all in your head. You can watch it on Good Show. It's there in India. Uh, at least it wasn't available for me. I got the link, of course. You guys sent it to me, but. Yeah. Uh, it's not available outside India, I think. In, in US, it is available on in no US, budge. it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, on no uh, budge. Okay. Uh, so, yes, uh, thank you so much for uh, listening, everyone. I hope I didn't irritate you and uh, Amrit will bring me back for future interviews. Uh, and uh, yes, you can listen to the other podcast on Spotify and I think YouTube also. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.